Okay, uh, pleased to introduce the next speaker, Yi Feng Mao from CU Boulder, talking about breathers. Please. Okay. Thank you, Mark. Uh, so today I will talk about the observation of breathers uh, in a real physical system called viscous wet conduit, uh, resulting from the solitary conoidal-like wave interactions. Uh, I will introduce the concept of conoidal-like crater, uh, and also the observation of breather interactions in that physical system. And the work is enjoined with Sathya and Mark, who are both here. So there have been many nice talks about breathers, but I will just give an uh, a brief introduction again. So breezers um, have localized disturbance in space or time um, and periodic in the other way around in time or space in the cold moving reference frame. Uh, in nonlinear dispersive systems, they have two time scales. One is associated with propagation and the other is associated with the internal oscillation. So in the cold moving reference frame, like here, you see it's actually breathing, right? And uh, let's see, for the first example here, there are different types of breathers. So the first example is the solution of the focusing MKDV equation. And we see this structure has uh, an elevation uh, on top of a constant background, a trivial background here. So we call this type to be to non-topological bright breather. On the other hand, uh, the bright breather can also be on a uh, non-trivial background, which is, a per, uh, let's see the, the interaction solution of the KDV equation here. This is a nonlinear superposition of the soliton on top of a conoidal wave background. And this is the interaction solution of the KDV equation. And we see the spatial uh, structure here. It is in the uh, bright elevated type uh, with the background uh, associated with a phase shift, and we call this to be topological bright. If there is a uh, reduction in amplitude on the carrier wave background, uh, we call this type to be a dark breather, and the dark breather is always topological because it always has a uh, non-trivial carrier wave background associated to a phase shift. And uh, in this case, this is a weakly nonlinear dark breather, it is often referred to the weekly nonlinear envelope sorter waves. Um, and in our work here, we want to extend that concept to the strongly nonlinear regime. So we will call this to be a topological dark breather here. And then I want to take a little bit of time to emphasize on this KDV inter interaction solution a little bit more. Okay. So um, in the recent work uh, in, by Hofer et al. Um, and others, they actually found the interactions solutions of the KDV equation and the, the character, uh, characterization of the solutions. So here are showing some representative solutions here. So in the bright breather cases, well, those are the solutions on different uh, nonlinear dispersion curves. And we see that they're bright topological uh, structure. And then they're on the conoidal wave with the, and the nonlinear dispersion relation actually suggests that the bright breather speed uh, travel is faster than the phase velocity of the carrier wave. Okay. And then this carrier wave here, the background, will be subject to a positive phase shift. This is given by the nonlinear dispersion relation. And then on the other hand, for the dark breathers, well, we have the structures like that, a depression type. Uh, in that structure, the nonlinear dispersion relation suggests that the dark breather speed will be slower than the carrier uh, wave speed. And the carrier background was subject to a negative phase shift. So it is the opposite of the bright topological breather. All right, so, and then breezers uh, have many physical applications. So for example, the first one here, the figure here is showing a dark uh, breather on the surface of water wave. It was generated in a water tank uh, by using the fat type wave maker. And then the uh, nonlinear shielding approximation of the surface gravity wave at the boundary. And the second example uh, was also given in the nice talk by Panos. Uh, it is a discrete breather in the diatomic granular crystal. And here is a bifurcation diagram of the maximum force versus the frequency. 
and the insets here are showing the two bright breather structures at specific value of the frequencies. And the third example here is in optics, and this is given by another nice talk by Pierre. Um, so this is like the breather-like structures uh, here in the far field. And this is like localized in both space and time. So this is uh, different from the KDV interaction solutions as we saw. All right, so the physical system we will use here uh, will be the viscous fluid conduit, uh, which Gennady has already had a, a nice uh, description on the first day of the workshop. So I will make a call back here today on the last day. Uh, and then this laboratory setup is shown here. So the viscous fluid conduit is a type of the two stoves called annular flow. Uh, the exterior flow is very viscous and very dense. And the interior flow is less viscous, less dense. Rises buoyantly within the annulus of the exterior. Uh, the fluids are miscible and uh, form a cylindrical free interface between the two fluids uh, with the mass, diffusi mass diffusion uh, much slower than the uh, momentum diffusion in, the, in, the, in our lab frame. And there are many physical applications uh, of the viscous fluid conduit, like magma in the earth mantle and channelized water flow beneath glaciers. Uh, and here is our laboratory setup. We pump dyed diluted glycerin, shown here, into the pure glycerin reservoir at the nose, uh, like from the nozzle, and vary the flow rate uh, at the nozzle by a pump. And then we look into the interfacial dynamics by extracting the interfacial wave uh, cross-sectional area uh, between the two Stokes fluids. Uh, Showing here are some previous experiments on the viscous fluid conduit. So the first experiment is the single solitaire wave. Uh, we watch its propagation. And the solitaire wave is found to be physically elastic uh, in the fluid conduit. And the second case here is a dispersive shock wave generated by, uh, let's, yeah, maybe we need to wait for it. Yeah, generated by going from one constant to another constant. And let's watch the oscillations here. It actually catches a lot of oscillations, disputes for structures of DSW. And the third case is the solid tunneling that we have a solid wave uh, traveling through that DSW. So we have DSW generated first, and then the solitaire wave overtaking the oscillations of the DSW. And the fourth case is the solitaire absorbing. So we have the solitaire wave overtaken by a DSW wave train. Okay. And those two cases here are actually, um, well, if we consider the DSW to be the modulated periodic wave, so those two cases here can also be considered as the modulated breathers. But then in the work by uh, Maiden et al., at that time, the concept of breathers uh, was not addressed in that papers. And today in our work, I will show the observation of breathers, uh, both bright and dark type, uh, in both weakly nonlinear and strongly nonlinear regime. Okay, so this physical system uh, can be well modeled by the so-called conduit equation shown here. And the A here is the cross-sectional area, T is time, and C is the vertical spatial coordinate. It is a strongly nonlinear and uh, non-integrable equation. And then in the weakly nonlinear regime, uh, we can use the multiple scales method. Uh, we introduce the slow variables, big T and big X. And epsilon here is the small amplitude parameter. And then we also introduce the fast variable theta here. So by doing that, we obtain the leading order behavior to be an envelope B of xt multiplied by a harmonic term plus the uh, compass conjugate. Okay. And this envelope B of xt satisfies the nonlinear Schrodinger equation uh, given here uh, with higher order terms. And for the conduit uh, nonlinear Schrodinger approximation, uh, this term, the uh, dispersion curvature, actually ha can have both um, positive and negative sign. So that splits the solution into a, a bright soliton and a dark soliton. Okay. 
So given that, the solution A here uh, will have two families. Uh, we found two specific families of solutions uh, to this higher order NS, and this gives the solution A to be a bright amyloid sorter wave, uh, depends on the parameters here, and a dark amyloid sorter wave given here. And the amyloid here will be uh, slowly varying, and the carrier waves are Stokes waves inside. However, by using the weak anonia approximation, the bright amyloid sorter hole we found is actually, uh, like it has a uh, negative uh, group velocity, so it will tra in the, travel in the negative direction, which um, we cannot observe in the experiments, because the ex experiment considers a wave maker problem that we make wave at the bottom and we expect the wave to go upwards. So we can't actually observe those bright amyloid sorter wave in the weak anonia regime. Dark will be fine. Dark has the positive group velocity, uh, which makes the observation to be possible. So our goal in this work will be, we want to generate both bright and dark uh, in, the, in the viscous fluid conduit, observe both. Uh, and in addition to the weak anion regime, we want to extend it to the strong anion regime. All right, so we know that the conduit equation uh, actually takes both um, the sorter wave solution, bright sorter wave, and the periodic traveling wave solution. So inspired by the KDV interaction solution, we think if we can do the same thing, uh, construct the interaction solution of the conduit equation. So we first perform a numeric simulations here. We directly interact the bright sorter wave and the periodic traveling wave of the conduit equation. And let me show you the movie here. So first we have a localized uh, periodic traveling wave. Uh, connected by a constant background from the left. And then this results in a uh, modulation region given here. And this modulation region given here was also analyzed for a uh, different equation called the BBM equation. But the BBM equation uh, has the same form as the counter equation in the linear regime. And then if we go to this middle part, when the sort of wave overtakes the periodic uh, background, so it takes, uh, overtakes it, then we find this bright breather-like structure. And then on the other hand, if we have the bright sort of wave generate first and let it to be overtaken by the periodic traveling wave, there's also a uh, modulation region given here because the periodic traveling wave is propagating into the constant background. And then we find uh, this dark breather-like structure given here. And this periodic traveling wave has a larger amplitude and a larger wave mean than the uh, solitary wave so that it can travel faster. All right, so by doing that, uh, we obtained the bright breather and dark breather-like structures, uh, and it seems to be a practical way to implement the nonlinear superposition uh, of the solitary wave and, and the periodic traveling waves uh, for both uh, like numerics and the experiments. And then to see uh, if the interaction waves are general solution of the conduit equation. In the recent work by Sathya, we actually took those interaction waves as the initial gas and used the Newton conjugate gradient method to solve, a, to solve the conduit one plus one B space time boundary value problem. And then by doing a speed continuation, we get a family of the bright breather given here. So this is the uh, topological bright breather with a periodic background. And we found this, we, we noticed that this is uh, analog to the KDV interaction solutions as I described before. Um, and this type of the bright breather solution can travel in the positive direction, which makes the experimental observation possible. All right, so before we dive into the experiments, uh, I want to first introduce uh, how we construct those periodic traveling waves in the, ex in the real experiment. So there have been some uh, previous experiments on the periodic traveling waves, but they're on a different dynamics as what we desire here. So here we want to contribute and reliably generate the periodic traveling waves in the conduit. So here shows our real experiment. It is uh, 90 degree clockwise rotated 
Okay, and the wave is traveling in the positive direction. It is periodic. And then if we extract the uh, cross-sectional area of this propagation wave, we have a structure given here uh, in the blue dots. And then we compare our experimental data with the conduit uh, periodic traveling wave solution given in the black dash line and achieved good agreement. Uh, we noticed that this uh, periodic traveling wave actually will approach to a sinusoidal wave in the small amplitude regime and a solitary wave in the long wavelength regime. So we call that to be conoidal-like, which is analog to the KDV conoidal wave. Okay, so then we performed 17 experimental trials uh, on, the, uh, on the periodic traveling waves, and then we extract the wave number of each trial of each wave, and then we comp compare the wave number with the conduit equation nonlinear dispersion relation. So uh, the blue dots here are the experimental wave number measurement, uh, and then the black squares here are the predicted nonlinear dispersion relation, and we achieve good agreements with like uh, under 5% error. So it shows that the conduit equation is a good, uh, is a good model for this viscous like, conduit. And then after doing that, we now are ready to generate breathers uh, in the physical system. So here is showing our uh, experimental data in the wiki nonlinear regime. Uh, this contour plot shows that uh, there's a dark breather uh, in a lighter color, with, which means the, the depression type here. So, and then the x axis is the vertical space, y axis is the time, and then we see that the breather is traveling to the positive C direction. Um, and then this weekly nonlinear breather was generated by using the conduit nonlinear shooting approximation as the boundary data. So we also see that there are some modulations on the carrier background. And then in the strong gain nonlinear regime, uh, we use the method that I introduced. So we uh, create a bright solitary wave and canoidal-like wave interactions. In this case, we had a solitary wave overtaking the canoidal-like periodic traveling wave in this case. And we find the solitary wave um, and the, the interaction between these two uh, results in a bright breather uh, structure showing here and also show us in the 2D contour plot, um, well, A here is the cross-sectional area, and then we have this dispersive region, which was expected, because the periodic wave was connected by a constant background. We have this modulation region here, and then uh, when the solitary wave fully overtakes the periodic background, we find this bright breather given here in the physical system. And we also see that by uh, just noticing the difference in the slope, we see that the bright breather has a faster speed than the carrier phase velocity. Okay. And then let's take a, a, a time size and a spatial size so that there's 1D structure in the spatial and temporal domain. Uh, we fit the carrier wave on the left and on the right with the conduit canoidal-like wave solution and then on the left, we extend the fitting to the right. So it, it is showing that there's a phase shift happening here. Okay. And similarly, for the temporal domain, uh, there's also a phase shift here. There's a slight difference between these two. The reason is that I want to address the difficulty uh, in obtaining the phase shift because it is very sensitive to the, to the fittings on the left and right. And then uh, if we compare that with the KDV bright breather solution, we find that it is consistent that the bright breather travels faster than the carrier phase velocity. And then, well, the KDV suggests that uh, the carrier wave should have a uh, positive phase shift, uh, which is slightly off with here. But I also want to address that we are uh, beyond the KDV regime now because we have a large, really large amplitude breather in this case. All right. And then let's take a time slice and look at the numerical simulation of the conduit equation. So this is the numerical simulation with uh, a periodic boundary condition and the uh, initial condition from the experimental data. We see that uh, 
the wave is pretty robust and stable uh, in the simulation and maintains essentially the same shape. Okay, on the other hand, we were also able to generate those dark breezers in the strong Linania regime. So here shows the movie of a bright solitary wave overtaken by a larger amplitude, larger mean uh, canoidal like traveling wave. And this is the, well, the modulation region. And then when the, dark, uh, when the bright solitary wave fully absorbed into the periodic background, this is the dark breather that we get. Okay, and then again, by comparing the slope here, we find that the dark breezer travels slower than the carrier wave here. Um, and this is also consistent with the KDV prediction given here. And then if we take a spatial and a time slice, we'll return the, the 1D structure in the spatial domain and in the temporal domain. We do the same fittings on the left and right, and we obtain the phase shift for this dark breezer in the experiment. And this is consistent with the KDV dark breather solution prediction that the dark breather is subject to a negative phase shift. And we perform the uh, same numeric simulation of the counter equation by taking the initial data to be the experimental data we obtain. So we see that there are some modulations happening. So it is propagating with those um, modulations from the experiment, but essentially, the dark structure is maintained during the propagation. All right, so now we have obtained both bright and dark breezers in the conduit in the strong Linania regime. Now we look at the breather interactions in different contexts. So the first is the bright, bright interaction in the conduit. So here 2D contour plot is showing what's happening here. So we have the larger amplitude one overtakes the smaller amplitude one, and then we track the uh, trajectory of the breezers showing in this ZT uh, plane. And then we see that when the small amplitude one travels, uh, right at the interaction, there's a spatial shift of the breather, a negative spatial shift. So it travels in this way and then going down and then keep traveling. And then for the larger amplitude one, uh, it also travels in this red line here. We see the trajectory, and then uh, there's a positive space shift in this case happening here. Okay, and then we also measure the speed uh, by using those trajectories here. We find that the speed, or given in this table, is quite consistent uh, of the breezers before and after interaction. So the breezers are physically elastic uh, for the interactions, and here the insets are showing the wave dynamics just before just at and just after the interaction. So it is a nonlinear uh, superposition shown here. All right, so then we also have dark, dark interaction. Um, for the Tomsic, I will just point out this nice uh, wave structure here, uh, which is the dark breather interacts with the other dark one and showing the, what, what's happening right at the interaction given here. And then for the bright dark interaction, we also obtain that in a fluid conduit because the bright breather travels faster than the carrier wave and travel faster than the dark breather. So we have this localized periodic traveling wave uh, showing here. And then we have the, this bright breather overtakes this dark one and resulting in the interaction area given here and continue the propagation after the interaction. Okay, so by tracking the trajectory here, we see that the bright breather is subject to a small, really small uh, space shift. Uh, so that means the bright breather is barely impacted by the dark one, uh, but the dark one has a negative phase shift showing here. Okay, and the insects given here is showing what's happening of the wave structures at the interaction. All right, so, uh, so far we have shown that the breezers are um, non near superposition of solitary and conoidal-like waves uh, in the physical system. We experimentally verified this, and then we show the breezer interactions in different contexts. So then we think about uh, if we could have more like uh, nice wave structures, like for example, two-phase wave modulations 
in, the, uh, in our experiment. So we did several trials here. The first is that uh, for the boundary data, we're inputting an amplitude modulation so that there's a pause right on the top of the canoidal-like background, and then there's no phase shift on the left and right. So by doing that, when we send it into the experiment, we see that the wave breaks into a bright structure and a dark structure here uh, with the modulations in between. And then the phase on the left and on the right will match each other because there's no phase shift at far field. And then on the other hand, we also did wave compression. Uh, so we modulate the frequency and the frequency follows a Gaussian function given here. So then by doing that, uh, we find that the wave at the boundary breaks into uh, actually several dark breezer structures in this case with modulation. And we also did wave stretching that we uh, like ex expand the wave in the middle uh, by, by, by changing the frequency here. And then we find in this case, the wave breaks into a coupled bright breather showing here and a light dark one. Actually, it's not very clear given uh, in the screen, but it, it, it will be like here, uh, somewhere there with modulations. All right, and we also did canoidal-like canoidal -like wave interactions in the fluid conduit. So here is showing uh, what's happening uh, during the interaction. So we have the first canoidal wave generated uh, with a, a relatively small amplitude and it goes to a constant background, so results in a transition modulation region. And then we get another canoidal-like wave with a larger amplitude to overtake that, the first one. And that results in a two-phase BSW structure showing in the middle. Okay, so uh, to summarize, in this work, we have shown the capability of generating canoidal-like traveling waves in a viscous fluid conduit. Uh, we have experimentally verified the breezers uh, are nonlinear superficies of solitary wave and canoidal-like wave interaction, uh, the interactions. And we uh, observed the breather, inter uh, br the breather interactions in different contexts. Um, we showed the existence of topological bright and topological dark breathers in the fluid conduit. And we also observed those multi-phase wave dynamics. Okay, and here is uh, a recent work that, we're, that we are working on uh, towards the breather gas where we have like multiple breathers, like uh, the dark and bright one interacting with each other. Um, so we have shown that the conduit, viscous fluid conduit is a good test bed for those um, complicated uh, wave dynamics. So we expect future work in observing more uh, wave phenomena like the generalized Riemann problem where we have two canoidal like waves interact with each other or breather trains or uh, those like breather gases. Thank you. We have time for a couple questions. Thank you. Very, very nice talk. Thank you very Thank much. You. Um, one question, when you said you used the Newton method, um, so you didn't show the definition of the, of, you know, how, like, m which equation you're solving. Oh. So, uh, yes. So, uh, yeah. So, yeah, so we are solving uh, using the Newton conjugate method on the conduit equation um, and solving the, like, the space time boundary value problem. So it's not just the... Uh, so uh, the reason I ask is because I, I don't think the conduit equation is integrable, or is it? It's not. So in my opinion, people don't really agree on a definition of a breather in the case that you have a non-integrable equation. So I don't know what the definition is, mathematically speaking. So, uh, but you know, so that's why I asked, so I'm, I'm not sure, um, so... Um, Right. Uh, so anyway, I, I'm sorry. I, uh, <laughs> so it's more than a question. So I've also worked a lot on breathers in the last couple of years. We use a see. different method. I see. And we never found a method like this. to. So I'd just be interested in how to do it this way because um, we use sort of a dynamic cleaning technique. Anyway, we can discuss it later. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, let's discuss later.
since you're not watching the Brazil game. <laughs> yes, yeah, starting now. <laughs> Uh, just a simple question, actually. Uh, so uh, you have a mean height for the breather, say in the KDV case, right? And if yeah. you were to fit uh, a pure KDV without the background at the same height, would it move faster or slower than, than, than the breather? Uh, you mean like fitting the, the so larger So to the mean wind. height of the breather, right? Mm -hmm. And then you, you can fit a KDV uh, to that height Yes. without the background. And I'm just curious whether it would be faster or slower than the breather. Do you know? I mean, uh, yeah, I think I'm not. A w don't have a yeah. I wondered to what extent you you were able to calculate the um, phase shifts uh -huh. from the for the conduit equation. They're, they're known for other equations, but are you able to calculate the asymptotic phase shift? Analytic, I mean, analytically, you have a numerical methods, obviously. How do we calculate the phase shift? Yes, do you have a, do you have a, a, a formula for it? Or? Uh, for the experimental data or for the exact solution? For the exact solution. Exact solution, the right. For the exact solution, uh, in the paper, in the work by Mark Cattell, uh, they have the nonlinear dispersion, rela dispersion relation yeah. calculated uh, analytically by using the double transformation so that they obtain that phase shift calculation that's related to the other uh, yeah. okay. parameter. Okay. Yeah. I can first make a comment, perhaps to Henrik's comment. Uh, there is a discrete community that has been calculating discrete breathers for over 40 or 50 years now. So uh, in that community, the definition of a breather is an exponentially localized temporal, temporally periodic solution. So that, so you do not need integrability in any way in order to have uh, breathers. The question that I wanted to ask you is, is that because I thought that your background was moving and then your breather part, will, your localized part was moving. So is it correct that there is no frame in which your solution can be purely breathing but otherwise steady so that you could actually compute it with periodic orbit type methods? You really need your conjugate gradient space-time method. You cannot really compute it as a periodic orbit. Is that correct? Or am I misreading what you said? Yes, 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 that's correct. Okay, okay let's thank our speaker. <laughs>